All right, I need a show of hands in the comment section on who has actually given any thought to a unit like Jax. When I say a unit like Jax, what I mean is a kind of synergy bot, one cost, who, you know, you pick up early game, you don't really worry too much about itemizing him. Maybe he holds some items for like your future tank. Um, is that something that, like, he's not flashy, right? He's not cool. Jax 3 doesn't do anything. Uh, you're not going to reroll Jax ever. Maybe you get like build a bud Jax or something, and, and all of a sudden you find yourself with a Jax 3. But generally speaking, Jax isn't a unit that, uh, that that people think about too much in TFD. He's not a type of unit that people give much thought to. Because people think about carries, they think about things that want all their damage items, or things that want things that want all their tank items and hold them really well in the late game. But Jax isn't that. What Jax is, is a one-cost shitter synergy bot. And so you might be asking, well, then what is there to talk about? You don't want items on Jax, you don't really care what he does. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you're kind of being an asshole to Jax, but uh, give the guy some credit. He has things that make him tick. He has has things that make him, you know, pop off, things he wants to do, and we're going to get into that. Also, I'm going to draw him again. No, I have more idea what he looks like, I think, than what Yana looks like, so we'll see. But, so, what makes a unit like Jax good or bad, right? Because Jax, again, isn't holding items. He's not something that is going to be doing a whole lot of damage, something that's even going to be hacking a whole lot. And so what can make a unit like that good? So the first thing that makes a unit like that good is what it lets you play into. And this, this is maybe like the, the most important concept with a unit like Jax, is what exactly does Jax let you hold in terms of units on stage one and two? Where does he help you go? Uh, how will, the quality of those kinds of things, and so, and also like what are his synergies, right? What does he activate on stage one? So, I think first and foremost, uh, we'll talk about his synergy. So he's Ink Shadow and he is Warden. So Warden actually pretty great synergy early game. Um, Story Weaver is he's like I'm, I'm making him a little too like Meta Knight ish. I'm gonna give him a longer torso. All right, can't do this in one take this time because I just messed that up royally. But basically, uh, Ink Shadow, uh, pretty good early game units, right? Senna is something that's been rerolled historically. Um, you know, going in, like Aatrox is ghostly, so there's that little two-piece thing. There's all kinds of stuff with, uh, with you know, going eight with Kai'Sa and like all kinds of Ink Shadow slash Trick Shot flex stuff. Uh, Warden as well, great synergy. Garen is really good. We've talked about Garen and we've talked about, not Garen per se, we talked about Story Weaver and why that's so good. I think he has like some black highlights here and there. So I'm just going to give him black hands. I don't know what else to do with him. Um, but then beyond, uh, beyond you know, just Garen, it, like it lets you hold all those three of units that are pretty decent units. Um, so yeah, basically his synergies enable him quite well. Basically, he, they make you want to hold him often. Uh, so, right, he he's fits really well with things like Caitlyn. He lets you hold Caitlyn's very easily. He lets you hold Senna's. Uh, more obviously, right, because she literally just straight up shares a synergy. Um, she lets you hold Teemo's and Sivers and uh, and all these things that just, like, are pretty good units. Like, pretty solid things. Pieces of a board on stage 2 that can do very well for you. And that's kind of the name of the game with one cost, right? What makes... I'm going to make a video about this at some point, but... Uh, what makes a one cost good is not... At least a one cost synergy block good is not, uh, you know, how well it holds items, how well... It's to a degree, but... It's not, like... You know how broken is Jax two with Crown Guard on on two one? It's what does he let you hold and how good are those units? And they're pretty good, right? Again, all everything in the Ghostly Tree, the Storyver Tree, you can it gets opened up a bit. Um, you can even play around like some of the Dryad stuff, like you play like, Nara plus Jax two plus Kindred. It can be a decent board. So there's there's lots of things that can be like pretty decent with Jax on stage two, and then going into stage three, like he can still be held if you want to play like a you know, vertical ghostly. Um, I think he has like six eyes or something. Do I have a, I have a tool for this, don't I? Oh, oh shit, that's not what I wanted. Oh no, it's fine. Okay. Uh, so you know, he lets you hold all kinds of good things, and he just he's just generally like not a good unit, but his synergies are good, and they make him a decent unit. In a vacuum, Jax isn't that great. He's just kind of a mediocre word that doesn't do too much, but and he lets you hold like pretty decent things. The other big thing to keep in mind about a unit like Jax is what items you that would make you like want to hold the Jax is like you don't want to hold Jax because you have Jax items right you're not going to be like uh oh man I have a bunch of tank items this Jax one looks really cool 
generally speaking, that's not what it's going to be, right? What you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at what kind of items the things Jax leads you to hold. And so stuff like sword and bow are great for Jax. Like if you have, you know, if you're on stage one and you have double Jax shop, like double, I don't know, double uh, Kog'Maw shop and you have sword dropped, you should almost always buy the double Jax instead of the double Kog'Maw because, I mean, unfortunately for Kog'Maw, uh, one, he's a little bit of a shitter, but two... Oh, I still have that enabled. Uh, two, Kog'Maw, just like, he, he sure you can make Chosen or something, but it's not going to be a strong board on stage two. But what Jax can do is he can be a two-star frontliner for your, um, oh, I'm making a line now. He can be a two-star frontliner. I wish you could use that. He a big two-star frontliner for your, you know, again, your Caitlyn or your Senna or your uh, Sivir as well as like maybe the best one of those units if you end up getting it. And so... Again, like, like, you don't want to hold Jax because you have Jax items. You want to hold Jax because you have items for things that can, like, be played with him easily. And also, like, that he can play into, right? Because Sword is great for Kai'Sa, and it's very easy to play into that. You can play into Sniper stuff really easily, too, because Caitlyn exists and because uh, Senna exists, right? It's a pretty easy transition. So, you know, Ash likes Swords. Kai'Sa, Ash, basically, I think the two main ones. But even mid-game, right? Like, Aphelios can hold Swords. Bard technically can, but, you know, no one's talking about Bard too much. Oh, I've changed the color of accident. No one's talking about Bard too much, but in general, right, the things that Jax leads you into, the units you end up holding, all these Ink Shadows and Snipers and, um, and, uh, Trick Shots and all those want Swords. So if you have Swords, a bunch of Swords, hold Jaxes. If you have, like, a bunch of tank items, you, you can, right? If you have, like, Sunfire Opener or something, or, like, Garbler Opener, you totally can, but don't expect him to do a lot. I would say units that can do a lot with that kind of stuff are... Um, we'll, we'll talk about them eventually, but it's not Jax, right? He's not going to do a lot of damage or anything. He's just going to be that big synergy bot frontliner for your your uh, pretty strong sword holding backliners. And that's what makes a one cost good. That that really is what makes a one cost good. Um, it isn't again not not every one cost. But like Darius, for example, is a beast, and he is like a big burly man who has big burly man things. But again, Jax is not that. Not every every dude has to be that. Not every one cost has to be that. He a, has a lamp post, right? But yeah, basically, what makes Jax good and when how to play around Jax? Don't build Jax items, really. Buy him if you have swords. Buy him if you want to play towards Ink Shadow stuff. You feel like you have a good item opener, a good augment opener for Ink Shadow stuff. Understand how to play him around the mid game in terms of, of what fits with him, right? All those units we talked about. Uh, and then kind of just go from there. Honestly, it's when you think starting with a game like that you improve a lot but also it becomes like pretty second nature and it's a pretty easy way to get better at the game i think this is not really a lamp post but yeah i'm gonna i does he have any stuff here i don't think so we're gonna call it there i think that looks good the, the drawing looks good so tldr uh Jax. if you have swords he doesn't don't, don't care about jacks items to play Jax. he doesn't don't care about bis Jax. it doesn't matter Miss Jax is having a bunch of swords on your backliner that fits into synergy as well. Um, understand that you're probably either rerolling or you're, like you know around Senna stuff, or you're going eight uh, and playing around Kaisa stuff or Ash stuff. Don't really hold Jax if you have an AP opener, unless you, you are an insane player who knows exactly what they're doing. Because I don't know how you'd play that. Um, and yeah, focus more on what the moving pieces around Jax are rather than Jax himself to get a better understanding of how to play around Jax. And that's gonna be true for a lot of one class that we talk about, but he's gonna be the first one in that vein so yeah bye bye